Hello guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Ask and Dance with the Flexi Mom Coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's such a great um, privilege to be here again to share with you on um, about healthy living. Uh, my name is Idala Ogufere and I am the Flexi Mom Coach, CEO of the Flexi Mom Coach Company and today we'll be talking about healthy living and skin and your skin, right? Um, we'll just wait a bit for everyone to join us. Um, hi James Movement, good to see you. Alright, let me just type out what we are talking about today, healthy living and and your skin healthy living and skin how are you doing today james james movement you can see what part of the what part of the world are you watching us from let us know where you're watching us from um thank you thank you miss jenny hi onyx events ng thank you so much for joining all right let's know where you're watching us from and okay, let's get the music started first okay um today we're talking about healthy living and hi all the way from vegas i'm in lagos too so all right we're talking about healthy living and your skin and like we all know the skin is the largest organ of the body Someone yesterday was saying, saying <laughs> how that you guys need to be very careful of, um, of the people that sell, that sell things. Hi, Miss Jenny from Cameroon. Good to see you. Hi, Uyo Kansen. Um, how that um, uh, a skincare person, I think someone, someone, someone that she wanted to buy something from, uh, was telling her that the skin is one of the largest organs of the body. The skin is actually the largest, largest organ of the body. So you have to be very careful uh, of the people that you buy your so-called organic skin care products. We are going to be um, bringing up life um, by 6.45. Um, one one special, special skin care person that I, I featured in her program, her, her page, um, some time ago, I think last week, and she's coming back here to tell us about skin care all right um basically what i'm just going to share with you is the simple trick to eating and to to having a good great skin on low budget okay great skin low budget you don't have to pay through your nose you don't have to do anything extraordinary and it's funny in tech and the the beautiful thing is that it doesn't have to Hi, Olarona. Good to see you. The beautiful thing that is is that you don't you don't have to pay through your nose to enjoy this thing that you I'm about to tell you. It's very very simple. Very simple. There's no hard and fast rule to it. Okay, because the um, the more we age, the the more we need to begin to take care of our skin, take care of ourselves, take care of your health. All right, and it's very very important that we. We learn these things, okay? So, basic, basic routine um, to um, to your skincare for healthy living, for a healthy skincare, um, for a healthy skin. Sorry, is drinking water. How many of us have issues with drinking water? Let me know. Let me know how much, how many, how many bottles of water have you taken today? How many can you really just say, okay, on average, how much water do you take? How much water do you take? How much water do you take on uh, on a daily basis, average? Let's let's hear. Hi, take me to play at the end. Good to see you. Uh, let's know. Let's know. Let's know. Um, how much water do you consume on a daily basis? How much water do you consume on a daily basis? All right. Um, you you hear a lot of people tell you that you have to drink from either three liters and upwards and all of that. The beautiful thing is that you will know your body will let you know when it is getting dehydrated you know all your you start feeling very dry and all of that but you don't have to get to that point where your your throat is feeling very dry very simple always get a bottle of water 
if you have a bottle handy you will take enough water the trick to taking water is always keeping a bottle handy in fact bottles handy you know if you're that kind of person that's if because it happens to everybody if water if there's no bottle handy it happens to even me there are sometimes you know you get too in, engrossed in work and you know if you are part of those people <laughs> you are so engrossed in work and you don't get to drink enough enough water right exactly Jane, Jane says on days when I'm out it's much lesser you get you know so when you are home always ensure that you have like bottles this this kind of bottle so for those of you that always think oh how, what do I buy for what do I buy for someone that wants to um, uh, maybe on their weight loss journey and all of that this is a great um, great um, gift you can give, you can buy anybody that is on that's embarking on a healthy living or weight loss journey always get them they, no, they won't tell you that is is enough they always want more bottles right um to encourage them to drink more water so i love there's a bottle that i'm actually looking for um i'm looking for th those three liter but all those bigger bottles i've been trying to get them I, I hardly go out so if i can if you know anyone that has those bottles please help me tag them on my page when when i put this um stuff out when i put the video out kindly help me tag anybody that you know that sells um this three and you know that they will deliver not the one that will be running after <laughs> they will deliver and so i want i would like a three liter bottle three to four liter bottle of this so that i know when i just put the water um and, and it's in front of me i i have no no there's no excuse but to just drink that water okay awesome all right miss jenny says i i drink 10 liter in three days and most people think it's not good you drink 10 liter in three days is that you, you drink it 10 liter per day or 10 liter for three days you, you drink 10 liter above the beautiful thing is that when it comes to water drinking you know your body and the best way to know if you are um, you are drinking too much water is the, it depends on the the you see the um, the color of your pee of your urine right once it's look it, once it's translucent like it's almost like the same color of water right like very clear once it's very clear you can just you know just ease out on the water drinking and all of that but if it is if it is really like <laughs> if it is towards like yellow yellowish if it's yellow know that you are not drank enough water that's like the test to know if you've drank enough water all right water is great for your skin great for your skin all right we have our 10 liter for three days that's like average you, you take like um that's about one point something help my help my maths please if it's 10 days that's like five liter per day if it is three days that means it's like mm, 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 three three point something liter per day all right yeah that's that's fair that's fair that's really there's nothing wrong with that that's yeah you're taking about an average like two to three liters per day right or so three point something liters per day which is which is fine um like i said the test to know if you are taking enough water is your pee that's like this that's like see as much as possible and try not to yeah three point something liter try not to try not to be too technical with your healthy living when, when you start getting too technical with um these things you just you just blank out right you just blank out and you are you are feeling you, you start feeling overwhelmed and uh, this what is, is this one acceptable is this one not accept, acceptable the whole goal right even if you are learning or listening to other people the whole goal for yourself is to is to um evaluate how far you have you have come right how far have you come on your journey you used to take you didn't used to drink enough water before but now you're beginning to take like one liter every day you jot it down write it down down right get a journal write it down 
all right i always i always i always said because the goal of journaling is so that you can evaluate your own goal your own progress okay it is very very essential that you are evaluating your if you don't do that it is very very easy to you know for those people that try that that fall off off track it is very easy to you know to just go off off the rail because you are not focused this is like your, your focus your eyes on the target your eyes on your goal on the goal that you have set for yourself and that really just helps you to become better you are motivated oh i drank a, a liter of water yesterday today i'm going to try high COVID 05 today i'm going to try to drink more water or i'm just going to try to um, be attentive hi lala i'm just going to try to be attentive to you know what i'm what i'm going through right so that's that water is very important so um what water even helps helps with your with your skin right with your hair and all of that so get hydrated fam get hydrated another thing is exercise great exercise you're wondering how does exercise help me with my skin i'm sure that our 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 speaker is going to come and talk more about it high power bank hq good to see you all right so i want i wanted to show you something but my this my laptop is just acting up kind of all right so how does exercise and your skin what 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 really what really does exercise do for you when it comes to skin care right um apart from the fact that it also helps with your hair okay see whenever i talk about your skin and you, 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 somehow i just talk about the hair also because what you, what you do on the outward you know exercising also let me, let me let me let me explain it this way exercising helps to you know kind of cleanse the toxin like your it's it's passing out the waste okay it helps to it helps to transport the waste out from your from inside to you know the skin and just you know clears clears it out and clears open the pores and all of that and so once you do that once you finish working out or doing any kind of exercise that gets your heart rate pumping and blood flow you know blood circulation and all of that it really 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 helps your skin okay the more you do your exercises and don't run away when i talk, talk about exercise exercising doesn't really have to be anything tedious i always say that for you to enjoy exercising always pace yourself you cannot be a beginner and when I say beginners, I hear some people say, this is not my first time of doing exercise. I've done exercise before. As long as you have stopped doing working out and you, you stop for a long time or you're giving yourself like weeks break, week, uh, week break that's like a week or weeks <laughs> break that is going into weeks and months, sister, you are a beginner, all right? You have to start all over again and begin to pace yourself do something that you start with something that you love start with something that you enjoy doing okay so it's very very important so because by increasing your blood flow exercise helps your skin it helps nourish your skin cells okay it helps nourish your skin cells and keeps it vital like it's so it's going to help you to glow glow and really that's really my my secret people hardly think people think that i people don't believe that i um hi okay lola i'm going to answer your question people because i have like one minute so that i can bring in the our guest speaker people think people don't believe that i don't rub cream like i hardly rub cream i don't have a a i don't have a particular the only <laughs> the stuff i use my, my husband also uses it hi obroche good to see you hi i am lady Teresa. awesome good to have you here you know my husband also uses it and all of that sometimes i even forget to rub cream like today i didn't rub cream i didn't today is just i just use the only makeup you see me use is just my eye cajal and all of that and by the time i go to have my bath because i just walked out and i just said let me show up here okay so um is it safe to exercise when pregnant? If you have not exercised before pregnancy, it is only safe for you to do what you can do. Don't overdo things. So if you can walk around, 
good uh, with, with the doctor except your doctor you have a um, sensitive or high risk pregnancy then you can stay away from exercising hi tara good to see you all right stay away from um strenuous exercise either um, if other than that you are free to do your exercise routine so i am going to bring up um and we'll just keep talking um as we go along the earthy goodness go live are you here i sent you a request hi hi <laughs> good to see you how are you doing i'm good i'm good how are you how's awesome. it been? it's been okay it's been awesome good day so far thank you for asking hope yours has been good as well yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay 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 so what do you have for us what do you have for us Okay, um, I'm going to um, pick up from where you left off from, which is exercise and your skin, before we move on to um, like diet and your skin, and like uh, they will do like a brief talk about skincare routines. Hi, everybody! Thank you for joining us uh, this evening. My name is Gary Care from the Earthy Goodness, and I'm the founder of the Earthy Goodness. So we do all things skincare for the whole family to enhance your skin. So. Um, Exercise and your skin. As Idala was saying, exercise actually promotes healthy skin. And it does this in three ways. I also talk about like some downsides or things to watch out for when you exercise so that you can um, optimize your exercise for your skin. So the first with exercising is when you exercise, it actually helps your blood to flow better and it helps to carry nutrients and oxygen to your blood cells. So your skin, it promotes good health that way too because when, you're, when your blood flows throughout your whole body because your skin is your largest organ so you need your blood to be pumping and to be flowing all of the time so when the when it pumps this blood to your skin with the oxygen it promotes nutrients to get to everywhere on your body so and that's one the second one is that when you sweat your sweat actually pushes out some of the toxins in your in your body so when you do your exercises and you're sweating just think of all the toxins that have been pushed out of your system. And the third way exercise actually impacts your skin health is, you know the way your blood, your um, heart works? Your heart needs to get pumped all of the time. If you are not exercising and you are sitting down all of the time, sometimes, like, when you sit down all of the time, look at me, like, I'm sitting down. It's only for people that work in offices. Your elbows are more often than not often resting on your desk or they are resting somewhere, or your thighs are, you know, touching, there's a contact between your butt, <laughs> I didn't want to say your butt before, your butt and your thighs with your chair. So sometimes you would see that you have, like, um, extra dark elbows, that is friction, there's constant friction between your skin and the desk, and your butt sometimes, so you need to move to ensure that your blood is constantly flowing, and that when you rest your arms on your desk or something, that there is moisture. Like ensure that you properly moisturize your elbows, so that it's, it's not just dry, dry and dry. It's resting. Yes, it's usually dry and it's resting on your desk. So there is nothing that is protecting your skin from all of the dirt, the germs, whatever is on the surface of the desk and the atmosphere. So always ensure that you know your skin is not constantly resting in one place. Like move it, keep it moving so that everything can flow. There is air circulating all over your body. So if you exercise, also watch out for when you sweat. Some people when they exercise they get chaffing on their thighs or and other parts of their body. So if you if you are the type that actually um, sweat a lot and you've experienced some chaffing between your thighs, you can use your antiperspirant, the roll on, the deodorants that you put under your armpits. You can put it on your thighs to reduce the sweat and to also reduce the friction. Because you see that some people have um, dark thighs, the inner thighs are quite dark. It is the friction, there is no extra airflow between your thighs that's what is causing that friction so when your skin rubs against each other it's going to be getting darker so just use the deodorant you want to use under your armpit apply a little to your thighs to ensure that it's not chaffing also before you exercise ensure that you wash your face the reason why i'm saying you should wash your face is when you exercise and you're sweating sometimes you tend to rub off the sweat if there is extra like maybe residue of makeup or products on your skin 
it might actually block your pores and that would lead to like breakouts but if your skin is clear it would actually have like an easier and cleaner surface for the toxins to be pushed out and there is nothing clogging your pores so ensure that you are making um, you are cleaning your skin before you exercise and after because if you exercise and then you leave sweat on your skin you are not cleaning it off i hope you can hear me i can hear um, like a little scratching sound yeah. yes okay so um ensure that you also wash off your skin properly after the exercise so that um you remove all of the dirt and the sweat then um the other thing about the exercising is after you're done ensure that like places where you sweat that you know that is not so obvious like under your boobs i'm sure like everybody on this call out is is a um everybody here is a lady i presume so under your boobs when you sweat you know like ensure that you have like a clean towel to dab it and to clean it because when you don't do that if you have extra sweat here and then you go on to do other things after a while you will start to experience some itching and then it actually leads to like a skin condition which is something that you want to avoid because remember there is cuz you are constantly wearing like an undergarment which is constantly rubbing on on your skin so you want to avoid irritation as much as possible so the way this happens is inflammation always like leads to hyperpigmentation because there is no way once your skin is irritated it's going to get inflamed and once it's inflamed you can be sure that you're going to have hyperpigmentation because you know we have extra melanin all black people we have extra melanin that's what is responsible for the pigments in our skin so this is the process irritation inflammation hyperpigmentation so at all costs you want to eliminate the first phase which is the irritation so that you don't then proceed to having an inflammation which you have to deal with and then the post inflammation which is the hyperpigmentation which is the extra dark spots or dark patches that people often experience so eliminate that irritation so that is that for exercising um uh, in terms of diet so um we're not saying you should start eating leaves and grass like an animal <laughs> no i'm just going to say that you should just incorporate like extra veggies into your meals you know like this is something a lot of people struggle with and we're not asking you to like make a total or drastic lifestyle change just a little bit of extra in your meals every day so for instance if you eat like your um, a furry roll or your ugu or your afang ensure that you know that you are actually incorporating extra veggies into your meals so um i'm not going to say you should start eating salad and all of that so the essence of eating like extra leafy greens is that they promote good health you have uh, extra antioxidant like leafy greens like spinach your ugu they give you extra um blood that's like the literal explanation for it and then they also give you antioxidants antioxidants are actually very beneficial for your skin because they help to reduce free radicals there is always something in the atmosphere in the environment that actually leads us to age so you would see that people that often um, walk outside or that are just going about their day you will see that their skin is actually aging faster than other people who protect themselves from the sun so you want to eliminate all those free radicals those are the things that cause cancer they are the things that you know give you extra wrinkles there are also things that actually just make you age faster than normal and going out in the sun there is no way you have some skin damage that would talk about you know going out in the sun later but like the antioxidant actually help to reduce some of this oxidative stress so it protects your skin so eat your um, your veggies and sure that you are incorporating it into your diet then also eat fatty fish i know some people say oh you know this fish is too fatty but they are actually very helpful fish uh, fish contains um, omega 3 fatty acids which are really good for the skin and they also contain zinc if you check some products they actually like have added zinc in it you need to be written on the label that this product has zinc zinc is very very good for the skin so if you are eating your fish like if you eat your mackerel eat salmon any fish that is fatty you know incorporate it into your diet it's really very good for you and then eat your nuts as well they also have omega 3 fatty acids which are good so things like your walnut everything that like, just eat it in moderation don't go excessively eating nuts because that can also help you to add some weight so just um eat it um in minimal portions then i'll come to um vitamin c vitamin c is crucial in all diets like if you are not incorporating vitamin c into your diet i know you already do because some of, a lot of us eat stew so once you eat your stew that is already red peppers <laughs> 
which has plenty of vitamin C. So don't just think about, you know, oranges, because every time we, when you mention vitamin C, everybody just thinks about, oh, orange, you know, it's not just oranges. There are other foods that have more vitamin C than actual oranges. So when you eat your bell peppers and... Um, yeah, your bell peppers, if you can find orange potatoes, like the sweet potatoes, some actually have orange, then some are actually like purple, some are white, they also have vitamin C in them, so, you know, eat all of those things, they help to promote healthy skin. Um, I wrote a few things down about other foods that actually help, and that, like eating other fruits as well. Um, those will be like um, you can eat um, strawberries strawberries are good eat mangoes the thing is we in Africa we are actually really blessed like any fruit that is in season you don't need to go out of your way to go and find like foreign fruits they look colorful they look nice they look pretty I totally understand but like don't fall for all of that anything that is in season eat it in moderation is actually really helpful for your skin and if you have acne for instance you know sometimes acne comes in different forms it could be a function of of your daily habits your practice or your lifestyle and for some people it's actually hormonal so if you have hormonal acne um, ensure that you know you try to like clean up your diet you need to eliminate things like dairy you can still like drink some milk but don't let it be like a um, like a major part of your of your daily food just eliminate it a little it will actually help your skin and then try to stay away from excessive fatty foods you don't need to eat like greasy stuff. You can always grill your food. You don't need to do deep frying all of the time. Like just try to like limit the fatty things that you eat and um, cut out the dairy. It will actually help you. This is for like people that only have hormonal acne. But if you have like regular acne, which could be like maybe your daily habits, you're wearing makeup all of the time and you're not taking off your makeup properly, then you need to change or address the way that you actually um, treat your skin. So that's that for food and exercises. I'm going to now move on to like the um, skincare routine. So when we talk about a skincare routine, people always think, oh, you know, skincare routine, like it's something that is one big thing that you have to do. No, you already have your bath daily. You probably rub cream on your body. That is already a routine. But to ensure that you are taking maximum use of your daily skincare routine, I'm just going to highlight some things that you can do better. So, um, when you wash your face, how are you washing your face? What are you using to wash your face? Because people will say, oh, I'm washing my face now. I've had this conversation so many times. I'm washing my face. Like, okay, so how are you actually washing your face? So initially, like, this is divided into two. How you take care of your skin in the morning and how you take care of your skin at night. So your skincare routine is also will be dependent on the type of skin that you have. Some people have really dry skin, some people have oily skin, and some people have normal skin. So if you have dry skin, you will notice that your skin gets irritated easily, your skin peels, it's dry, you can actually like see it, sometimes it's peeling. And if you have oily skin, oily skin are those that like immediately you finish having your bath, like within 30 minutes, your face is already greasy, it's really oily. That is oily skin. And then some people have normal skin. Normal skin is neither dry, it's not, it's not oily. Like, it's just there. It's normal. Those are, like, the lucky people. <laughs> lucky, lucky people. So um, you need to, like, focus your and tailor your skincare routine to the skin type that you have. So you first need to identify what skin that you have. If you don't, if you can't identify your skin, then it's going to be really... Um, difficult for you to like find a routine that works for you so i'm just going to like talk generally about the routines which you can then adapt to your own skin type so when you're washing your face in the morning we'll start with morning because when we wake up excuse me that is how we start our days when you wake up in the morning for instance um, and you go to wash your face when you're washing your face if you are using a soap when i say soap soap i mean like a bar soap or if you are using like black soap so the way soap works is soap actually cleanses the skin but soap is high in um, alkaline and your skin's ph when i say alkaline so, um, this is just a bit technical but i will just break it down so there is acidity um, yeah, there's acidity and there is alkalinity so that is just your ph your skin's ph is between 4.5 and 6. this is important so that when you're um, using products you know how they work so your skin's ph is between 4.5 and 6. So when we talk about acidity, acidity is below um, 3.0, while alkaline is anything higher than 8.0. So normally soaps are high in that alkaline because that's the only way they would work. If they are not 
if it's not alkaline, it's not going to be soap. It's not going to fall. It won't form and it will not uh, make suds. So knowing this, you know that when you use like um, black soap or a bar soap on your face, when you're done, ensure that you use a toner to rebalance your skin. Remember your skin's pH is between 4.5 to 6. So if you use a soap, it might raise the alkaline and you don't want your skin to be raised um, in that manner because it will start to impair your skin barrier. Anything that you do to your skin, you have to ensure that you're really, really gentle. Keep in mind that you're, you always have to be gentle with your skin. When you start to do too much, you are going to start having issues with your skin. So when you use a soap, ensure you use a toner to rebalance your skin. So the, the toner essentially is to bring your skin back to the normal pH it's supposed to be before you proceed to anything else. But if you are using things like um, cleansers, like a synthetic um, detergent or something, like all those cleansers that you buy, those fancy ones, you know, those are usually pH balanced. So you may decide not to use a toner because this one is not altering your skin's pH. So once you are done cleansing your skin, so if you are using like a toner, you want to, uh, if you are using like a cleanser, you want to ensure you are washing your face for up to one minute to ensure that you properly take out all of the oils, the sweat during the night. Remember, we're still talking about morning. You want to take out all of the dirt and uh, like extra grease from your pillows, the sweat, and any products that you applied the night before so that you have a clean slate to start your morning with. So when you do that, uh, when you come out of the bathroom, when you're drying your face, and when you're washing your face, you know, some people will go in and be washing their face as if they are washing cloths. No. <laughs> You want to wash your face really gently. Just use the light um, fingertips. Just gently. Just do it really, really gently. And wash your face for up to one minute. If you are using things like bar soap or, you know, or black soap, ensure that you are also very gentle. Like you are not going all in and washing your face like cloth. No, you don't have to do that. Just wash it um, really gently. And then when you are done, don't let your skin dry out before you leave the bathroom don't even like use you can use a clean towel to just gently dab your face don't rub so that you are not dragging and moving your skin just dab it really gently and ensure they are not drying it out completely leave your skin to be damp before you move on to the next step so if you are going to use a toner toners serve different functions some help you to remove the extra residue from if you, if you didn't cleanse your face properly, for instance, it will remove the remaining dirt on your face. And some toners are actually like um, treatment. So if you have like acne and you're using maybe um, a toner that has salicylic acid in it or that has um, benzoyl peroxide or something, that serves as a treatment. So just apply it on your face while your skin is still damp. And then toners can also be used to actually rehydrate the skin. So maybe between the time you left the bathroom and the time you finish up drying your body, your face is already dry. You can use a toner to rehydrate your skin by making it a little bit moist before you apply maybe your moisturizer or you want to apply your serums. So if you're using a serum, so a lot of people use hyaluronic acid. And I'm talking about this because a lot of people probably use it here. So... Hyaluronic acid is actually an hydrator. It brings hydration to your skin. Remember, we are trying to be gentle with our skin. Anything that dries out your skin, as much as possible, avoid it. So people would often apply the hyaluronic acid to their dry skin. Don't do that. You are wasting the product. It's not going to work. Remember, hyaluronic acid is supposed to absorb up to 1,000 times of its weight in um, water. If there's no water on your skin, what exactly is the hyaluronic acid going to be hydrating? Absolutely nothing. It's actually going to make your skin drier. So ensure you're applying it while your skin is a little bit damp so that it can work optimally. And if you're not using any serums, if it's just moisturizer that you are using, ensure that your skin is still damp while you apply your moisturizer. Because the essence of applying a moisturizer is in three folds. It helps to seal hydration onto your skin and it helps to seal in the cracks on your skin. Like it fills in the holes on your skin and it protects your skin from the environment. So if you are going to use like a facial oil, for instance, and you're applying it while your skin is dry, that oil is just going to sit on top of your skin. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to hydrate your skin. It will not function. It will just make your skin drier. But if you apply an oil to your face while it is damp, it's going to sink in. Your face will feel more soft. It will, you, you will feel the softness. You will feel that, yes, this thing is actually penetrating. The same thing applies to your body. Ensure whatever you're applying on your body, you're applying it to damp skin. That is the only way that your skin will not dry out. And this is especially important for people that have dry skin. 
whatever you are doing, don't do anything while your skin is dry. If you finish and your skin is dry, you can get a spray bottle, fill it with um, distilled water, spray it all over your body to rehydrate your body. Yeah, just spritz it all over and then apply your oils or apply your moisturizer and then you'll be good to go. So um, then the next thing is, you need to wear sunscreen. I say this, if you don't take anything away from this conversation, <laughs> hold this Especially one with your left hand. Go out. Yeah, so. go out. Yes, yes. You must wear sunscreen. If you have dark spots, if you have hyperpigmentation, if you have melasma, whatever it is that you are treating, you must wear sunscreen. If you are not wearing sunscreen, you are wasting your money, you are wasting your time. What sunscreen does is sunscreen helps to ensure that all of those products that you are using on your skin, it helps them to perform better because the sun is not interfering with them. UV rays are not interfering with them. And then it's also protecting your skin. So for instance, if you have hyperpigmentation and you're using um, a lightening product to help you to erase the dark spots, and then you are going out in the sun without protection, what you're doing is you're wasting your time because one, the product will not work. Number two, the dark spots will actually get worse because the sun is the number one culprit of you getting dark spots. It's the one that is making you um, age faster than your age mates. So you need to protect your skin. Find a sunscreen. There is a sunscreen out there for everybody. And um, for me, I prefer for people to use mineral sunscreen rather than chemical sunscreen. And I will explain why. Um, chemical sunscreen, when you use them, they are the ones that don't leave that white cast. Mineral sunscreen tends to leave a white cast because they often have physical um, sun blockers. But there are so many different ones now that don't have that white cast. Just look around. Do like a Google search of mineral sunscreen that don't leave a white cast. There are several options. So why um, I prefer a mineral sunscreen for black people is it physically blocks the UV rays that causes the damage. So it's more better. It's better for dark people rather than using a chemical sunscreen. Chemical sunscreen, the way it works is it absorbs the UV rays and it converts it to heat. Because we already have melanin in our skin, that process of absorption and conversion causes some damage already into the skin. Because we have, our dark skin is actually very, very, you know, people feel, oh, you know, we are black, we are rugged. That is a lie. Your skin is actually more delicate than Caucasians because you have extra melanin our skin tends to dry out faster that's why when we have dry skin that's why our skin turns white meanwhile if a caucasian person who has actually also not applied moisturizer their skin will not be as white as your own that's that you physically see your own cracks you will physically see your own whiteness so your skin is actually more sensitive than caucasians so you need to be protecting it better than you know, our counter counterparts because we have extra melanin that goes into overdrive at any slight irritation or at any slight incident. Incident, excuse me. So please wear your sunscreen and try to find a mineral sunscreen. So that's that for like a morning routine. If you're, So the process is you cleanse your skin, you apply a toner if you are using one, apply a serum after that if you are using one. It's not compulsory. And then use your moisturizers and most importantly finish off with a sunscreen and don't say because i'm inside the house i don't need sunscreen if you know that you're going to be in your house and you'll be sitting by a window <laughs> you need to wear a sunscreen and if you are going to be out remember to apply your sunscreen every two hours and you should you should use two finger lengths like this finger which should be here Two finger lengths for your entire face and your neck and every time you're doing your skincare routine your face it doesn't end here your face ends at your chest. <laughs> so anything you're applying on your skin, I'm sure everything is, you know, like you are seeing my face now. This is everything that you can see. This is my whole face. Everything that is exposed. So when I do my routine, it is everything that goes here. So your sunscreen, those two finger lengths, it applies to your face, your ears, your neck, and your chest. That is the two finger lengths. That's that for your entire morning routine. For people that have acne, you would wonder, okay, when should I apply my treatments? So if you are using a serum, it should be like after your serum or after your toner. But also try to finish off with a moisturizer just so you are protecting your skin and you are sealing it. Then for the night, when you come back from work or from your daily activities, essentially you want to take off your day. So when I say you're taking off your day, first of all, you have to remove your makeup. 
if you're wearing makeup, you need to remove that makeup first before you go and wash your face. And when I say remove your makeup, um, if you use baby wipes or makeup wipes to take off your makeup, that doesn't count. That that's not even cleansing your skin, man. <laughs> That doesn't count at all. And you also have to be gentle because um, the preservatives in the baby wipes and the makeup wipes, for some people, it can actually inflame their skin. And it also tugs at the skin. So you need to be really gentle. If you're going to use a makeup wipe, ensure that you apply it like... Um, make, make it wet before you use it to take off your makeup. You can either do that or use a micellar water or use an oil to clean your face. If you have acne... Don't use an oil to take off your makeup. Oil is really good in dissolving makeup because makeup is mostly oils, so it will help to, to dissolve it. But you need to be careful about the types of oil that you'll be using to take off your makeup. Don't use coconut oil on your face. Whether you have dry skin, you have normal skin, you have, don't. coconut oil is comedogenic. What that means is that it's going to block your pores. So don't use coconut oil on your face. Avoid it. You can use almond oil. You can use sunflower oil. Just a little bit, just to help your skin to dissolve that uh, makeup. So you just apply like a few drops. Rub it between your palms. Don't do it while your face is wet. Just apply it dry on your skin and just rub all of the places, especially for like um, your, your wearing waterproof uh, mascara. Apply it everywhere and then use your makeup wipe to wipe that off. That is the first step before you wash your face. If you're not, you know, you have to be really careful careful don't try to do an oil cleansing method don't use the oil you can use a micellar water just remove the makeup get rid of the makeup first and then go and wash your face this is what is known as a double cleanse method so you do your cleansing in two steps which is the first one is removing your makeup and then washing your face that's what it's called the double cleansing system so at night is when we want to apply all of the fancy ingredients when you're done washing your face after removing your makeup i keep saying this because i see people just directly just washing their face with the makeup on and then they wash it once and they feel my face is clean no your face is not clean yet make sure you remove that makeup first before you go and wash your face when you have done that you are sure that your face is now clean <laughs> So don't just go into washing face with your makeup on. No, that would properly remove all of the makeup. So when you are done with that, use a toner, use your serum. The same principle of applying your products to damp skin also applies in this instance. So um, for a lot of people, it's advisable to start using like a retinol-based cream at night uh, because it does it all. Like that's the gold standard for anti-aging. I don't say anti-aging, I usually prefer to say pro-aging, but like if you have acne, if you have like dark spots, a retinol-based cream is actually quite beneficial for your skin. So you don't have to use like, you don't have to do all those 10 steps skincare routine that you see people doing, they will do SS, they will do serum, they will say, it's way too much. Your skincare routine can be just three things. It can be that cleansing, the toner and the moisturizer or a night cream, and that is it. And then you add sunscreen in the morning. And that's it that, you know, you don't have to do too much. It is when you start to do a lot of things, that is when problems start to happen. So just do the first step, the second step, and the third step, and then you're done. So um, this is also a mistake that I see people making when they are doing um, their night makeup routine. Like you do your makeup, you do your night skincare routine when you're about to sleep. Why are you doing that? Like immediately you apply the cream and then you go and fall on your bed. Everything you applied on your face is going to go with your pillow now, you know. <laughs> so, so don't do your makeup, your night skincare routine when you're just about to go to bed. No, do it about two hours before you go to bed. So you are sure that the products are actually working on your skin and they are not following your pillow. <laughs> I hope you get it. <laughs> So do it before, like two hours before or an hour before, you know. And again, you, people say, oh, I don't have time. Where will I have time for skincare routine? As I've explained, it's not a lot. You already do your skincare routine because you wash your face in the morning. You wash it at night. And if you are the type that you are at home and you feel, oh, I'm at home. I didn't go anywhere. I don't need to wash my face at night. No. During the day, your skin cells are producing oil glands. There is sebum on your face. You probably sweat, you probably cooked, 
there's stuff in the air everything is accumulating on your skin so as much as possible even though you didn't go anywhere go and wash your face when it is night time don't just feel oh, i was in the house all day i know we all get lazy i was in the house all day i didn't do anything i don't need to wash my face no that's not the case at all go and take your day off wash your face and apply a bit of moisturizer and also for my oily skinned people when we tell you to apply a moisturizer you say, oh, my face is so oily i don't need a moisturizer for you oily skinned people you especially need a moisturizer and this is the reason every time your skin because you have an abundance of sebum production so what your skin produces extra oils when it feels dry so when you use all those toners that suck the oil as we always say you know that this toner is to suck the oil your face will you know the oil it will produce extra oils because what happens is when your skin feels like it is dry it's going to go into an over overdrive of production of oil just to compensate for that dryness. That is why you use all of those toners that will those harsh alcohol toners that will suck the oil. And 30 minutes later, you touch your face and then you come up with oil that can fry egg. <laughs> the reason why you do do that why that happens is you are dried up all of the oils on your skin, and your skin is now compensating for that dryness by producing more. So what you want to do is avoid. <laughs> avoid that dryness allow your skin to breathe apply a bit of moisturizer if your face feels calm if it feels like i'm not dry it's not going to be producing all of those extra oils and i'm telling you this because i have oily skin my skin is oily so i can tell you for a fact that since i started using moisturizer and face oils my skin has calmed down so much i don't even feel the greasiness like it just radiates like it's just there it just didn't produce unnecessary oils so Use your moisturizer, use a face oil if you choose. Like, choose either or if you have oily skin. Don't say because you have oily skin, you're not going to use a moisturizer. Don't do that. Your face is going to be overcompensating all the time. And as much as possible, don't use everything max. You know, some people will use, oh, you'll use um, max, what's it called now? I've not used this in so long, so I can't remember what it's called. Um, your, what's that thing you applied before foundation? Somebody remind me, please, I can't remember. Um, what is it called? Oh, that thing that people, that they apply before the foundation. Primer. Mm, mm, mm. The primer, God bless you, thank you. So, you know, you, you do matte primer, you do matte foundation, matte um, powder to seal it in, like everything is just matte, matte, matte. At the end of the day, your skin will feel dry. So it will start to produce more oils. So don't do that. Like, um, let your skin, let it feel like it has a bit. So that's where the moisturizer comes in. Because the moisturizer is going to go on your face before the primers and all of that, it will help your skin to not feel like it is dried out. So it's not going to be doing that overcompensation of oil production. Uh -huh. So that's that. Then if you have dry skin, as much as possible, don't use products that are harsh. So if you have dry skin, ensure, so you can do this both in two ways. You can use a moisturizer, and then when you're done with the moisturizer, apply a bit of oil just to give you an added layer of protection. Or you use a heavy moisturizer on your face, and then you can rehydrate your skin during the day. So you have like um, an essence that is in a bottle, or you just have like your toner in a bottle and just spray it on your face randomly, just spray it on your skin during the day so that helps you to avoid your skin drying out the entire day up until night when you have to do your skincare routine so during the day that you are like even with your makeup on you can just spritz a bit of um toner or moisturizer just spray it on your face for people that have dry skin and if, if you have normal combination skin you lucky people you know <laughs> i don't have nothing for you but follow the normal skincare routine you don't have any issues just follow like easy routines that suits you, that suits your skin type. You know, this is the mistake people make. Like you use products that are not meant for your skin type and more often than not, that would actually aggravate your skin and allow it to break out. So um, that's that. If you are treating dark spots, you are treating hyperpigmentation, be more um, circumspect with the products that you use. So if you have um, acne, use products that will actually treat your acne. And if you are using benzyl peroxide on your acne, be aware that benzyl peroxide will actually deactivate any lightening products that you are using to clear your dark spots. I will say that again. If you are using benzyl peroxide to clear your acne, 
and you are also using products that lighten your dark spots, that benzyl peroxide is going to deactivate those lightening products. They will not work. So it's either you focus on just treating your acne and then later you treat the dark spots. So you can break your skincare routine into two. That is in the morning, you can use the benzyl peroxide to treat the dark spots. And then at night, you use the lightening products to treat the dark spots. So benzyl peroxide in the morning to treat the acne. And then at night, you use the lightening products. Or you find other acne products that would treat both the dark spots and the acne at the same time without deactivating each other. And again, avoid layering too many products. I know all of our skincare influencers, they use 10 products. You too. Yeah, you, you go and buy 10 products. No. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. Choose products based on your skincare type, your, on your skin type and the condition that you are treating. So... Um, and again, you people are performing bathroom chemistry. You are just layering products. I hear my baby crying. Uh, you're just layering different products that sometimes they cancel each other out or they render each other ineffective. So if you are using something like uh, salicylic acid and then you are applying, uh, let me see, which other thing can you even use or, um, that also that doesn't work together well? Okay, so as if you use like maybe something with like glycolic acid and then you're not going to use retinol. You're going to destroy your skin. I was saying, you will destroy your skin. So some things are better. You're not even supposed to mix them at all. So be very careful. Don't just layer products because everybody's using so, 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 and so. No, don't do that. You need to know the ingredients and how they work. So if you are using like a serum that has salicylic acid, avoid using any other thing because salicylic acid, for instance, is very uh, low in acidity so the only thing that will complement it that you can use with it is maybe hyaluronic acid or just use a plain moisturizer you don't want to layer another active on it because you start to impair your skin barrier your skin will start to react to too many things and at the end of the day you won't even know what is causing you to break out because you are using so many things you have confused your skin so you need to be careful use retinol only at night you should not be, you have no business using retinol in the morning Especially during the day, you have no absolutely no business. You are going to ruin your skin. So use it at night. It's best suited to nighttime. While for other products, they are best suited for daytime. So in the morning, for instance, everybody needs to get a vitamin C serum. Like it works. It protects your skin from um, oxidative stress. It fights your free radicals, and it also boosts the effectiveness of your sunscreen. So vitamin C is very very good. It helps your skin to be radiant. It really, really helps. And it works on acne by brightening your dark spots. So, you know, try to incorporate vitamin C serum into your, um, your morning routine. That, that if you are going to, like, buy any product at all, try to make it a vitamin C serum to incorporate into your day. So um, I think that's that. Okay, then technique for application of your product. So if you're going to apply, like, a serum, you're going to apply moisturizer, when you're doing this, don't rub your skin like this. You know, like when people are rubbing cream, people just rubbing in circular motion and rubbing in circular motion. You don't have to do that. Because when you do that, especially if you are layering products, sometimes when you layer too many products, you see that they start to rub off. Like you can literally see them crumbling on your skin. So to avoid all of those kind of issues, like when the product is already on your palm, just make sure it's well spread on your hand and then you press it into your skin. Just press it in press it in that applies for everything so you can see the way i'm pressing it in i'm not moving my skin so when you start to, all those movements they start to make you have wrinkles so just pat it in gently and then just let it stick so if you are layering products everything is just going to stay on top of one another it's when you start to rub it like this that's when they start to fall up and start to crumble you don't need to do that and um yeah and no hot water i know some of us we cannot do without hot water but breaking news Black people, hot water is not your friend. <laughs> hot yeah, water like is not water. your friend. Although I, I know. Steaming your face is not your friend. You have no business steaming your face. Are you rice? Why are you steaming your skin? I don't understand. <laughs> so, you know, some people steam that you know, everybody has, you know, you steam your skin. We do this because we have seen estheticians and you know, people that do facials with it. The only reason why you should steam your face, and I was like, don't steam your face. The reason why they steam the face when you go and do a facial 
is to soften your pores so that whatever it is they are going to apply during the facials will penetrate your skin better. So you have no business doing this all of the time, like steaming your face. No, 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 no. Remember when they are even doing it at the uh, facial suits at the salon? It's just for like 10 minutes and you only apply um, the hot towel to your skin, to your face just to soften it before they apply the product onto your skin. So, and this is, you don't do facials every week, so it's just once a month. So you have no business steaming your face. If you are steaming your face, <laughs> this comment, scrubbing your face with sponge, I am coming, I'll come and respond. <laughs> if you are, don't steam your face, because remember, heat is your enemy if you have dark spots. The same thing applies when you are cooking. Not when you open your pot and you immediately dip your face inside the pot as you are opening it. Take a step back. When you open the pot, step back, drop the cover of the pot, let the steam escape before you look into the pot to see whatever is going on in there. Don't let that heat hit your face. No. It will make your pigmentation worse. It's that, you know, some people, you see their body when they open their skin, you see all of this place, everything is light. But up here like this, everything is dark. What do you think is responsible for that? It's the heat from the sun. It's the sun that is damaging your skin. So avoid all of the heat. It's not necessary. You don't need it. So take all of that out of your um, skin. So I'm going to address this. Scrubbing your face with sponge. Um, it's not advisable. You can do it maybe if you have, uh, if your skin can take it. Maybe do it once a month. But I really don't see the benefits because, and I'll say why. If you are scrubbing your face, you don't need to, just once a month, you are doing physical exfoliation. There are better ways to do that. You don't need a sponge. Because the reason is, a sponge can tear your skin. If you have really sensitive skin, a sponge can tear your skin. You have micro tears. And when you have micro tears, remember, you irritate your skin. Once you irritate your skin, you have inflammation. Once your skin is inflamed, what does that lead to? It leads to hyperpigmentation. So remember, take off anything that will cause irritation to your skin in the first place. That's the most important thing. Anything that will cause that irritation, you want to eliminate it. So you don't want to be using sponge on your face. If, you, if your face can take it, you can do it just once a month. But there are actually products that you can use that don't cause the micro tears. You can use a face scrub. And when I say a face scrub, I don't mean a sugar scrub. For heaven's sake, please, everybody that uses um, sugar scrub on their face, please stop. Sugar crystals have jagged edges that will tear your skin. And apart from tearing your skin, um, sugar is food. It is bacteria. You will feed the bacteria on your face. So you will have extra acne. So don't use sugar scrub on your face. You can use like, um, not even walnut shells. Use jojoba beads. They are round. They are smooth. They are not going to tear your skin. You can use things like glycolic acid to dissolve. Um, that actually works better because it penetrates your skin deeper. You can use any products with AHAs to exfoliate your skin. So you don't need um, all of those physical or manual exfoliation. Only do that like once a month and if your skin can take it. Um, someone is asking how to, how can I clear eye bags? So um, the problem with eye bags is Sometimes it is hereditary, sometimes it's a lifestyle issue, and sometimes it's due to fat loss. So if there is like a fat loss, um, like you lose weight generally, your face might get sunken, and then it will be, um, and then you would have the bag. So you are not sleeping well. Some people are, so from instance, me naturally, I have natural bags because this is how I was made. Everybody in my family, from my father's side, we all have it. There's nothing we can do about it. So I'll be wasting my time and my money if I was looking for somebody to help me to clear it. So first of all, you need to ensure that is this something that is hereditary? Is it in your DNA? If it's in your DNA, don't waste your time. It's going to be there. There's nothing you can do about it. Number two, if it is because you are not sleeping well or because of stress, eliminate the stress. Start to sleep well. Ensure you are getting in your eight hours of sleep. And then see how that takes you. And then also look for products that have like caffeine in them. There are you know, several eye creams that have um, caffeine to help the eye bags. But if, remember I said, if, it, if this is in your DNA, no amount of eye creams or eye gels will make it disappear. It's not going to go. So take note of that before you start to apply your um, eye creams. So, um, yeah. Then, oh, <laughs> one more thing. 
always ensure that you have a separate towel for your face. Don't use your body towel for your face. Remember, your body towel has been to different places on your body. <laughs> it has packed all of the bacteria on your body. Don't use it on your face. Use a clean, separate towel. And change your towels every week. Every single week, change your towels. You can buy white towels use it on your body and just soak it you know soak everything the reason why you should be using a um, white towel is it's not for any the only reason is because you can just soak everything and just add bleach and then that's it you don't need to do anything that's why hotels use white towels it's so much easier for them to clean than using colorful towels that you have to be worrying about or color bleeding all they do is just put everything together bleach it wash it it's done so to make your life easier just get a white towel that you can just get several there are several types, different sizes. You can use one every day for your face. Just make sure you're using a clean towel, separate one from your body on your face. So that is the best way to do it. So um, to round off, remember, easy does it. You don't need a 10-step skincare routine. Three steps is enough. Clean, stone, moisturize, sunscreen in the morning. Then at night, clean, stone, moisturize. That is it. As simple as that. No long thing. Then if you want to be a little bit extra, you can now do like a face mask, during the weekend or at the end of the month or take yourself for a facial key ingredients to use remember vitamin c is super important in your skincare routine so try to get one trust me at the end of one month even before the end of a month you will see a clear difference try to get niacinamide especially if you have textured skin it is really really good it helps to improve your skin's texture and in the long run, it helps to brighten your skin. When I say brighten, I don't mean lighten your skin. But it helps to brighten it like it makes your skin more radiant. And it also boosts the efficacy of your acne treatments. And then if you want to splurge or you want to add a little bit of extra, you have to get a retinol-based cream. So remember your vitamins A, B, and C. Vitamin A is the retinol. Vitamin B is your niacinamide. And vitamin C that's your, you know, that's your jam. So it's so easy. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can drop it. I hope I've been yes. able to help you a little. <laughs> you have given us a master class in record time. Like, guys, stop give, 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 um, um, <laughs> the earth is in so Thank so you. Hard, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take the two questions. Someone said, any sunscreen recommendation for kids? So find any sunscreen is okay for kids. Like some are like specifically for kids. So try to find those ones where they say for, for kids. The reason is um, some sunscreen ingredients have actually been found to be controversial. Those are like your apobenzone, oxybenzone. So like, some of those are actually not in children's formulated sunscreen. So just look for the ones that they say um, sunscreen for kids. So use the, the cheapest one or the most easily accessible one usually is Neutrogena. So you can use that. Some can leave a white cast, but they are children, you know. <laughs> Do they care? They don't really care. So like, you know, apply it on their skin. And again, I notice this trend a lot. People say, oh, my child is dark. I, you know, my child is dark. I want to lighten. Please, for the love of God. If there is anything at all that you are going to do for your kids, don't lighten their skin at all. Just leave it the way it is. The most important thing you can do for them at this time is to use a sunscreen on them whenever they are going outside. And the reason I'm begging you not to lighten your child's skin is, um, even for adults, when you start to use lightening products, over a period of time, it thins out your skin. And because your skin is even already aging, as we age, we don't have as much fat deposits in our skin as we used to when we were kids. And then you're now using like lightening products, which some thin out the skin. You might have skin cancer. It leads to kidney disease. Remember, some of these things actually get deposited into our bloodstream. And it's not because you've used it once. It is every day you're using the same thing, you're using the same thing. So little by little, it gets deposited. And unfortunately, because of the environment that we're in, we have so many unscrupulous vendors. They use mercury, they use steroids. So you really can't be sure of what goes into this product. So don't give it to your children. Remember, their hormones are still developing. That's why these days, you will see little kids, and then you're wondering why their body is developing. 
you are wondering why they're having diabetes it's all some of these things are because of what they eat and what you apply on their body so avoid all of those as much as possible don't use lightning ingredients on them let them grow older once they're like 18 and hey you know their skin is a little bit mature and then even they on their own they can now make an informed decision as to whether they want to lighten their skin or not but it's not necessary everything is vanity you don't have to don't do that um then someone asked about vitamin e so for vitamin e it's a fantastic antioxidant it's really good if you can find it in any of your formulations it could be in your moisturizer use it it is really really very good it protects your skin so it's a wonderful ingredient use it as well um the best level the best spf level for sunscreen we usually say at least 30 and the reason we say 30 is um it helps you to stay outside for longer before your skin starts to burn so don't rely on sunscreen that is inside your foundation it's not going to give you adequate protection remember you're supposed to use two finger lengths of sunscreen for your face and your neck there is no way you can apply two finger lengths of foundation <laughs> and you not look like you're wearing a mask it's not possible so as much as possible don't rely on the one on your in your foundation use a proper sunscreen so SPF 30 is the minimum. You can use SPF 15 if you are not actively going outdoors. I remember this one in Nigeria is not, it's not friendly. So, <laughs> so optimal protection, use at least 30. And don't think that if you use um, SPF 80, that is going to protect you for longer. See, once SPF, once it reaches 80, there is very, very minimal difference that you put between 80, between 100, between 90. There's really no difference. So SPF 30 is, is fantastic. It's okay. So awesome. yeah, that is it. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. If you You're want welcome. ladies and gentlemen or this that are going to watch you today, <laughs> um, please feel free to reach out to if you don't care at um, the earthly goodness. I yeah. like guaranteed you guys are going to you've learned I'm sure you've learned so much uh, um so much about this just if you haven't in fact there's a lot to learn even I I have to go and listen to this again um to hear the you know the basic thing you need to know first of all is what like I asked what's your skin type so that you don't go and start doing the routine of somebody else and you now yeah. Yeah, so all first of all, know what your skin type is. If you don't know it, it will not you will not you just you might just enter ditch. So please ensure that you know what your <laughs> what your skin type is before you start the yeah. routine to apply and do. So I'm sure you guys learned a lot. Thank you so much, um, Thank you, Dala. I think we have one question. Let me just quickly say this so that um, everybody goes off. So if you if you feel like you have two different skin types, like maybe your face is oily, your body is dry, then you already know that, okay, the product that you use on your face will be different from the one on your body. So like for your body, you make sure you use products for dry skin. And then for your face, you use products for oily skin. And the same thing goes for people that have dry um, face and then oily skin. Just ensure that you are using products that apply to each body part. For instance, for me, I noticed that recently my body is um, drier than my face. So, which is really strange because I've always had like oily, oily skin. So, I'll try to like intensify the way I moisturize. I do double moisturizing now. At night, I would also apply moisturizer before going to bed so that when I wake up in the morning, I don't see ashy skin so like just do what works for your skin type because if you are not doing what works for your skin type you will not see the results that you are looking for the cocoa is know your skin type <laughs> so that you can address the issues <laughs> exactly exactly thank you thank you thank you so much we have to you are welcome <laughs> yes we will definitely be um, coming to your dm very soon no problem always happy to help <laughs> thank you so much all right everybody Bye bye. Have a wonderful time. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you again next week, um, Thursday. Please feel free to chat in the comment section when this video is up on the in our Instagram feed. Um, let's get to know what you want us to talk about um, in next week. If you want us to do a a what's the what's it called now? Type two or version two or chapter two of this episode let us know what exactly you want us to um talk about we are here to help you become 
intentional about the health of your spirit, your soul, and your body, using what you have, using what you have, you have realized that everything that you need to have a healthy skin, to live a healthy life, um, is within you, is within your reach. You don't need to go and start looking for something extraordinary. Start with what you have, use what you have, and begin to enjoy your, your life. Because this is the body that you need to use um, to, to you know, birth that vision that you, you have, that desire, that thing that you want to do. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate everyone showing up. Please feel free to click the link in our bio. If you want to join exercise, um, our exercise routine, um, there, we have a free group that, that is kicking up right, like right now. We're supposed to head up there immediately. So um, feel free to click on our Facebook group so that you can join us um, doing exercise routines or you join us in our morning sessions, which will start next week. Next week, we begin working out um, Tuesdays to Fridays. We work out 5 a.m. and we are introducing the evening workout sessions by 7 p.m. All right, so feel free, join us, get your skin to work for you, get your body to work for you. Your body is self healing, this can heal itself. You're, you've always wanted great hair, you've always wanted great skin, you've always wanted great body. You need to work for it, all right. See ya until next time that we come your way again on um, Ask and Dance. My name is Idala Ugufere and I am the Flexi Mom Coach. I'm amongst four boys and I help you to stay intentional with the health of your spirit, your soul and your body. All right? I help you to use what you have and start where you are so that you can begin to enjoy a healthy lifestyle. Okay, so until next time. Bye.